Welcome back. Now, let's talk about matters politics now. Um, today being a Monday, 24th of October, we want to focus more on what happened over the weekend. The president was in Okambani, matters in security in that particular region. And of course, right now, it's also extending to some parts of Meru, Tigania, and uh, etc. And of course, what you should expect in the political arena in uh, this particular week. And the coming weeks, so to speak, and in studio I have got two gentlemen, uh, great men indeed. Let me start with uh, Dr. Joseph Rotich, who is an economist, but with a lot of bias on <laughs> politics. I Thank you so much. Tell tell you. Oh, good morning. Welcome, sir. Uh, Karibu sana. <laughs> Thank you so much. They say yeah, would I? <laughs> Thank you so much. And I have got uh, Kevin Katisie, who is um, a senior counsel and, of course, um, speaker of the Kitui County Assembly. Uh, Wakili Karibu. Sante Sana Victor, and good morning to all Kenyans. And allow me to say happy Diwali to all our mm. Indian brothers and sisters. And I wonder why Diwali is, is, has never been annulled in Kenya. <laughs> we were expecting to the rest. Just told us why yes. so <laughs> but we understand. Kenya is a, we, we, many Kenyans actually push the government to yes. declare a national holiday. Yes, yes. We yes. love holidays. We love holidays. Right? Uh, today would have been somewhere relaxing with our Fireworks families. Fireworks and uh, holiday on a Monday. Yes, yes. I would yes, imagine yes. what Dr. would be doing in the village right now. I would love <laughs> to be there. <laughs> in fact, hello, but uh, I want to say hello. Yes. I want to share the same happy day, mm. happy Diwali, with our Hindu brothers, wherever they are. Right. In fact, uh, although I'm the product of the Indian uh, education, I school yes, in India. Yes, yes, and, yes, yes. Uh, all these holidays, mm. uh, Diwali and the rest, mm. Indians have a lot of holidays. Uh, <laughs> they have a lot. Uh, in okay. Kenya, we have been talking about uh, having a lot of holidays, but India has uh, a lot of them. Yes. So in this case, uh, I want to say uh, we are happy to join the Indian brothers, wherever they are, uh, in this very special day of Diwali, the, 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 the celebration of lights. And uh, we are with you. Thank you so much. Mm. Mm. All right. So um, let me start with you, uh, uh, Wakili. L last night when we talked, you are on your way from uh, Kitui, I, I suppose. Yes. Uh, just a quick update on the security issue there between Tana River and part of Eastern, and now it's even extending to the other side of Meru, Embu, Tigania. How is the situation security-wise? Last time we spoke last week on Monday, it was not that good. What about today? Today I can say it is better, mm -hmm. but uh, not uh, fully uh, resolved. Right. And uh, I'm sure one of the main reasons why the president came to worship in Kitui mm. was so that he can address that particular issue while he is there. Yeah. And he did, he did uh, address it well, and he said that uh, the security forces have been well uh, facilitated mm. to, con to contain the situation. Because it was very bad, uh, Victor, because uh, people were being killed. Yeah. And even now, it, it almost became like a war and a conflict between the Kamba community and the Somali community. Mm. And it should, it should never be that way. Because we have existed, uh, coexisted with the, the Kambas and Somalis for a very long time. But there's a time, I remember in the 1992, uh, 93, 94, mm. when we were young, I remember it was bad. And actually, uh, the, the, the GSU camps had to be put there, and the AP camps had to be put mm -hmm. there. Even at some point, the military had to intervene. So I think the, before this situation reaches there, I think it is high time that the government takes a lead role in ensuring that the situation is contained. Mm -hmm. And as is uh, the county government of Kitui, yeah. we even went ahead to even have a motion in, in before the House to debate on how we should uh, handle this situation. Mm -hmm. And the governor promised uh, uh, to, even yesterday, he, he spoke that he will make sure that in every uh, village yeah. along the the, the, the the border between uh, Tana River County and uh, and uh, Kitui County, mm -hmm. he, he will he will create uh, construct uh, police stations. Mm -hmm. And the president responded by saying that he, after we construct the police stations, he will equip those stations with police officers. Yeah. And uh, we, we wonder whether you see uh, security is a is a national government uh, initiative. Mm -hmm. As is a county government, we are only chipping in so that now because now our people are suffering. Yeah. And I think it is high time that the the, the, the the president assures every Kenyan that they are safe wherever they are, mm. because uh, the the Somali community who are who are, who are bringing their, their their camels to Kitui yes. are also citizens of Kenya. But then the problem is, uh, are they taking these camels to the right place? Because there's conflict. That that is uh, where uh, the conflict uh, is all about. Yes, yes, yes. And you know, I think part of the conflict is because 
there is a, what we call the South Kitrigim Reserve, mm. where they normally take their camels. Mm -hmm. And now uh, the, nobody can, can say this is our, our, our land because you know, a game reserve is a national uh, property. Yeah. So now, but now when they are there, they have to be taken to look for water. Mm. So now while they are going to look for water, and there's a uh, the river called Dhuwa River. Yeah. That is now where all the conflict arises. Because, of course, uh, camels don't, uh, don't run like uh, lions or mm. le leopards. They just go at a slow pace. So mm. now, along the way now, from the game reserve to where now they go to water them. Uh, they leave a trail of destruction. Exactly. Yeah. So I think uh, yeah. all we need like, as a camper community is a long lasting solution and the Kamba people are very uh, very peaceful people yeah. but you know of course when you are provoked to the limit uh, you, you have to take action mm. so I think uh, as we move forward and uh, the president did assure us yesterday mm -hmm. that he will ensure that there is security and we even said as a county government we asked the, pre the, the national government to help us uh, uh, make sure that there is a cut line yeah. between the two counties uh, because you know uh, that issue is not, on, is no longer, not, not only in Mutha mm. in Kitui South, but it cuts across all the uh, all the 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 cords which neighbor Tana River and yes. and Meru because you know Kitui County and yeah. many people don't know we don't border Garissa County at any point mm -hmm. we only border Tana River, Tana River. then Meru yes yeah so uh, along the border between Tana River and, uh, and and Kitui that is where all the conflict is and of course mm. I've seen many politicians trying to politicize this issue I think this is an issue we should not be politicized yeah it is high time that we actually differentiate politics and real issues mm. because these are real issue people are dying and instead of now as uh, focusing on how to have a long lasting solutions some people are busy there politicizing it i can assure you uh, even though it is a national government uh, uh, issue mm. as is the current government of kitui and uh, the governor did say that uh, we are going to have uh, a meeting with the governor of Rana river uh, yeah. godana because you see once the two governors sit down and uh, the two counties sit down we can also engage the national government and tell them mm. these are our people and these are the long lasting solutions which we want to propose yeah. because I believe that will be the only way we can uh, we can help each other because no Victor some people mm. uh, some of the those Mali others they have bought land from the Kamba community yeah. legitimately mm. and they, they, they say we bought this land and we can graze here mm. others mm. are just uh, en encroaching the uh, land of the Kamba people and, uh, and grazing their camels mm. I've even heard that uh, some of the camels belong to some Kamba people. Mm. So you see now, we should avoid making this issue become like a, an ethnic issue. Yeah. It should be, we should deal with those individuals. Not, not uh, uh, out there the years, the crucifying the one community against exactly. the other. Exactly. Yeah. So I think uh, this issue, the way I heard the governor and the president say yesterday, mm -hmm. I believe uh, in the shortest time possible, yeah. it will be resolved. Absolutely. Yes. Dr. I had to give him time because he's a speaker, he's uh, one of the leaders from that region, and he is a native from that region, so he understands that particular um, uh, you know, issue perfectly. But the situation is, it's becoming quite open right now because of the drought. And <coughs> because the blame is so much on the drought, but animal-human conflict, um, had us crossing from one area to the next has been a big problem over the years. I think, although uh, the way I look at it is not uh, about the conflict between the Kambas and the, the, the Somalis. I'm looking at it as uh, a conflict of uh, the areas of the creasing, the creasing areas and then the water uh, so catchment areas. Yeah. And uh, I think the permanent solution, although uh, the government must look into how to secure a better place or rather take water to the nearby areas whereby the Somalis are actually creating their, their camels. Because it is a crisis. It is actually between dead and life. Uh, the Somalis have to take their camels out of their own areas because they already have no water, they already have no pastures. And in this case, I don't see that as a conflict between the campers and the Somalis themselves. Mm. I, I think the issue of law must be solved amicably uh, with the understanding that this country is now facing a very serious drought. Yeah. It is facing a serious drought which if this animal dies, the, I mean the people themselves will follow. I mean the, 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 the people, I mean the, the camels themselves. So for the Somalis to safeguard the animals, they are also safeguarding their own lives. Mm. And we must understand in that perspective. We should not criminalize the whole thing to look like it is, it is uh, the Somalis are actually encroaching into the Kamba areas. Yeah. And um, I think away from politics or law, uh, this is a, I mean a catastrophe 
big kind of uh, phenomenon mm. that Kenyans must handle it as a serious issue that is facing the Somali people. Mm. Because I don't think they are joy riders. The Somalis are not joy riders. They are not riding their camels into the Kamba land with the intentions of I mean, destroying their groves or destroying their land. They are basically looking for the pastures. They are basically looking for water, which must be seen as that. And the moment we see that way, the government of Kenya will actually should come up yeah. and make sure that water is made available to the Somali people mm. in their own area. So the, the issue of build, building up a barrier, the issue of actually, I mean, fencing up uh, the campus away from their own natural intermingling with the Somali people may mm. not be a solution. Mm. Because these are people whom they have actually co coexist. They have been living together. In fact, I believe they are also sharing a lot of common things together exactly. as neighbors. Yeah, you said so, that some of them... Uh, and land. in this case, I want to, I mean, I, I'm, I'm foreseeing a situation or law whereby I think the right thinking approach mm. Uh, should be made uh, possible so that these people can coexist the way they have been, but while the Somali people, I mean, uh, may get access to water catchment areas. Yeah. Because the basic problem is not about the conflict, it's not about the hostility it's between the two groups, it's about the pasture and water. Absolutely. Mm. Mm. Kevin, uh, let me just ask you this question. Yes. You know, the president said that um, uh, the police unit has been well financed, so that should be in their, you know, their mandate to make sure that that is done. But ideally, Matter security should be a national government, you know, hmm. wing. Why, why don't, the, why, why do you think the president just decided now to fund the police wing and say, this is now not in my office, the IG take charge? Sometimes the president's call is quite important in such matters, hmm. I would suppose. Yeah, that's true. But let's, let's understand that the police service is supposed to be actually independent hmm. uh, uh, from the, the executive. Hmm. The president should only be uh, partnering with them yeah. because they are supposed to be very very independent as they do their job mm. so long as they are well facilitated then they should do their job mm. i think everybody must do their uh, is our job but i think overally the president is responsible yeah. overally even though now the job uh, has been delegated to the police force but mm. overall the president is delegated but uh, and uh, i can uh, Partly, partly, partly disagree with the doctor by saying that uh, even though we want to look for long-term solutions, yes. we also have to look for short-term solutions. Because as we speak, uh, doctor, and mm -hmm. that's where I come from, and I visited that area, Victor, mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, what I saw uh, was uh, not a very good uh, scene. A first-hand experience? What yes. Was, what was, what was, what was yes, down there? Because to be honest, uh, the, there is a looming uh, war. Mm. There's a looming uh, big crisis actually in that area because uh, uh, the Somali people have actually settled there mm -hmm. because they've even, be, they've even built their manatas there, they have settled there, the campus are there, and all of them are speaking the language which you can't understand. They're saying, We're also Kenyans, we belong here. The campus are saying, This is our land, we have been forced away. Yeah, so uh, the, the kind of uh, situation there. It's not uh, something to take uh, so something has to lightly. Be done pretty something fast. has to be done very, very fast. To be honest, if you have encroached into somebody's land, yeah, and then you are saying you must be there because you are, you are a Kenyan, then you see now this other person may also take action, mm. and you see some of the things being done to the Kamba community uh, they are in inhumane, mm. and even some of the things being done to the Somali community by the campus, they are inhumane. Imagine you, I'm sure that you saw a photo of a camel which was uh, Sla yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it is very bad. Yeah, there's a lady who was killed, and there was, the lady was, who was mm. killed. Mm. And actually, uh, there, 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 there was a man who was dragged from his house and uh, and killed mm. just out of his house. That sometimes these uh, 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 friends, are, they are, they are, the bad deeds, let me call them that way, because I'm avoiding calling the community name, mm. they go to uh, a house, they even uh, rape a lady in front of the husband. I, I, I mean, Victor, it is it is very sad. And, and I things think, are uh, happening yes, right now. Things are, these are happening right now. They are happening right now. Yeah, because I'm telling you, it is not as Kenyans uh, see in the media. What is the local leadership doing, meanwhile, before um, long-term measure is taken? We have been trying and we have, we, have, we have been on the ground, Victor. Right. We are talking to these people, asking them to maintain peace and harmony. Mm. Because uh, as much as we know, no, the Somali people are also Kenyans. Yes. And some of them, as, uh, as I've told you, Victor, they have even bought land there. Mm. Yeah. They have said, me, I came here. And I was, uh, I was, I told them I want to buy land, and, and I bought, yeah. Which yeah. is because they are a Ken and a Kenya can settle anywhere. Mm -hmm. But you see now, uh, we also need to to try and ensure that. And the way Doctor was saying, we need to have a long term solution mm. because you see, these uh, Somali others come to Kitui in, in in search of water. 
to be honest. Basically, that is the primary reason. And the one thing I can ask our president, yes, because uh, he's a president who loves his people and he would like to see a long-lasting solution in, in Kenya. I would ask him, because yesterday he said that uh, he's planning to have several dams in Kenya, actually thousands and thousands of dams. Where can he uh, ensure that we have several dams in that part of Tana River? Yeah, and also uh, Kitui, because you see, if these uh, Somali others have enough water, then they will never uh, uh, go out there uh, in, uh, encroaching other people's property in search of water. Mm. And also, you see, the, 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 they also need pasture. Yeah, and you know, when we have dams, and especially those uh, we call sand dams, the, uh, around those sand dams, I'm sure the environment is, 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 is very good and there could yeah. be good pasture, because we need to look for long-lasting solution. And as le local leaders, we have actually we, we actually engage because these uh, Somali people they also have their elders mm. and we, we engage them we talk we tell them you know let us not engage in war let us just talk we are all Kenyans and that is ongoing right now as we speak exactly yeah we, we engage on a daily basis and we talk because you see if we say that we are going to fight we will fight until when mm. and there will be casualties so we said as a, as a county government even though it is not our mandate Imagine to our, ne to our next end where account government Daktari mm -hmm. is also taking responsibility. We are saying we are going to use our money, mm -hmm. which, we are, which we are meant to, to do county development projects, to actually even construct classrooms. Yeah. I mean, I mean uh, police stations. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to use this money to construct classrooms, but now we are using no. this money yeah. to, to construct uh, poli 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 police stations. Exactly. And uh, if the president says there is enough money, for the police force. Why can this money mm. not be used in constructing those uh, yeah. uh, poli police stations? Mm. Because I think it is item that the government knows that, uh, the national government knows that security is their primary responsibility. Mm. And we are saying even if it means having a military camp there, yes. let it be there. Because as the people of Kitui, I can tell you, Victor, it will reach a point where we shall say enough is enough. Yeah. Because our people can't be killed when we are looking at we are just staring and, and uh, pleading for help. We just hope it doesn't, no help is it doesn't have to get there. Now the president was there. Gave the regional commissioner yes. an order to make sure that that is taken sure care of. Taken care of. Yes. And me, I'm saying as a leader from Kitui County, if mm. they don't do that, okay. of course, as leaders, we can't wait and see our people mm. being killed. All right. But I'm sure mm. it will not reach that level. Right. I'm sure the regional commissioner, the police uh, commandant who is there, and, and he was even given an order and told, mm. do what is necessary to make sure that there is peace okay. in this area. Let's take a break. When we come back, I want us to get now into the real action because we had to start that twin, uh, with that one because matter security is a national issue. And uh, being that uh, the speaker come from that particular area, something that we talked about last Monday, so we had to get an update on that. So let's take a break and we come back. The president was in Ukambani yesterday and he said that he approached Honorable Stephen Kalonzo Musioka to come and work with him and Kalonzo Musioka said no. <laughs> We'll discuss that <laughs> with Dr. Rotich and the speaker Kevin Katisa when we come back Thank shortly so well. after this. <laughs> Welcome back. It's now 13 minutes past 8 a.m. We've just started. Are you ready for this? All right. So the president was in Ukambani yesterday for a church service and a Thanksgiving ceremony at um, the eastern part of Kenya. And uh, let's take a look at what he said yesterday concerning his um, approach to Honorable Stephen Kalos Musioka. President William Ruto attended a Thanksgiving service at AIC Kitui Township where he reached out to all Kenyans to work with the government for the sake of development. Mumeniambia kuhusu maneno ya ndugu yangu Stephen. Stephen ni ndugu yangu mkubwa na akiwa tayari kufanya kazi na mimi, mimi niko tayari kufanya kazi na yeye. Mimi mwenyewe nimemtafuta huyo Stephen, nimeketi chini na yeye, nikamwambia ndio hii serikali tuunde pa, tuende pamoja akaniambia kwanza anataka kujaribu ya upinzani so waja jaribu kidogo alafu tutaona mbili <laughs> so there is no problem hata hii ya upinzani ni kazi pia so hata hii upinzani pia ni kazi let me start with you uh, speaker you were at that function 
And um, is that the truth on the ground? Which truth, uh, Victor? Or what, what the president said? Yes. Yes, Victor, uh, as the, the speaker of the Counter Assembly of Kitui, mm -hmm. I'm definitely a state officer. And I had the duty to welcome the president mm. to Kitui County. And we were there with my governor, Dr. Julius Makao Malombe, and other leaders from uh, Kitui County and from Lower Eastern, and even from the entire country. We were there to welcome our president because, because it is not uh, easy for a president to visit a particular area. Mm. So we were there to welcome him. And yes, uh, it was supposed to be a Thanksgiving service, but uh, we saw politics playing mm -hmm. as usual. Because yes. you know, these are political leaders and they must do a little bit of politicking. And uh, yes, I heard what the president said. Okay. Yes. Before you continue, that mm. is also captured on the front page of the Daily Nation, which says, uh, here it is. Um, Kalonzo refused job offer says Ruto. Kalonzo refused job offer, says Kalonzo. The president continues to say that uh, the president, President William Ruto yesterday said that he had made deliberate efforts to engage wiper leader Kalonzo Musioka, including offering him a job in his government, which he flatly declined. That story continues on page five of the Daily Nation. All right. I, I don't know whether to ask you, because you might say that you might say that you're not the spokesperson of, of Honorable Kalonzo Musioka, but is this the true situation that Kalonzo was offered a job but he flatly refused? Actually, Victor, you have just read my mind that I would have told you that I'm not uh, Honorable Kalonzo Musioka's spokesperson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm sure uh, he, he himself can uh, speak on his own behalf because we we can't say what the president said is a truth or a lie because uh, it was a. Uh, a discussion between him, if it was there anyway, yes. between him and Honorable Kalonzo Musioka. So we don't know whether it is the truth, but that is what we heard the president say. Perhaps maybe we should wait and hear what Honorable Kalonzo will, will say, because uh, the president, uh, of course, uh, and we saw he was provoked uh, to comment on that by the governor of uh, Machakos mm. when uh, she said that she, was, uh, she had been sent by Honorable Kalonzo Musioka uh, to, to just uh, welcome the president to, to Ketui and to tell uh, him that uh, he's, he can come to Kitui any time. Mm. Uh, and of course, he, he's willing uh, to work with him. So we don't know whether that was the position, whether she was sent or not, because uh, I wondered why, why I being sent when, when a, a governor for Kitui is there. So we don't know. We, we don't know about anything unless now we hear that from uh, the former vice president himself. Yes. But one thing I can say is that uh, when that debate was being... Uh, was being uh, conducted by the politicians, mm. and especially now the deputy president, I saw a lot of uh, disrespect uh, to the former vice president by, mm. the, by the deputy president. And I have a lot of humility to the deputy president, uh, Honorable Rigadi Gashagwa, but uh, how he went about it, I think the people of uh, Ukambani at large were not gen generally happy. Mm -hmm. Because you see, Honorable Kalonzo Musioka is a senior politician. Many leaders, uh, including myself, we have gone through his hands. He has trained us uh, to be where we are now. And he's a senior and seasoned politician. He knows what he is doing. Believe you me, Victor. Yes. He knows what he is doing. And you see, if he was offered a job, he will, if he was a greedy person, he would have quickly taken the job. Yeah. Or else maybe people are expecting him to do what... Uh, uh, the former premise did in, in, in 2018 by quickly going for handshake. Perhaps that is not Kalonzo Musioka's style. Mm. Yeah? And you know, uh, he has been in this, in this game for a very long time. If he says, let me do this, he has a plan. Because yeah. Victor, to be honest, and we must be very honest, uh, we know very well the president would like to serve another term. Mm. And if now, even now, Honorable Kalonzo Musioka joins uh, the president, what will happen to him? Mm. Politically, right. he's done. So I think um, I agree with the, with my, my party leader because he's my party leader, and I respect and love him very much. Mm. And I'm sure whatever he's doing, he's doing for the best interest of us as a community and also the best interest of Kenyans. Because if we have no uh, vibrant and uh, uh, good uh, opposition, yes. then how will the government uh, uh, do proper service mm. to the Kenyans? Because okay. that's, and even you, even you heard the president say, even opposition is, is, is a job. It's a, it's and actually, I think it's high time that okay. the Constitution uh, acknowledges the opposition side of the government. Yes. <laughs> yes. Dr. what do you think? When this was happening, Kalonzo Musioka Honorable was in Kisumu yesterday. And someone would argue that the president 
being in Kitui, his home turf, and actually he said that the president was going to where he was baptized and he was away. Kalonzo Musioka, the Honorable, by all means, is, 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 a, is a figure in Okambani region. And he was missing in action. He was in Kisumu, where the president was in his compound, so to speak, not his home turf. I think uh, to be very candid, although uh, Kalonzo Musioka, His Excellency, was in Homa Bay mm. during the burial of uh, one of the... Um, Kaluma's father. Kaluma's uh, father. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then after the burial, they proceeded to Kisumu mm. for a uh, prayer. And even he said that before they ended up in delivering, uh, delivering church, mm -hmm. uh, delivering church in, in, in Kisumu, uh, they were looking for a place where to worship. So in this case, even during his actually off remarks, he said that uh, he's aware that his excellence, the president is in Kitui, and uh, he's in the church where he was baptized. Mm. That was the back 1969. And... Uh, he was saying he's welcome there. He's welcome. That is his remark. He is welcome mm. there. And uh, going by the issue of refusing the, the job uh, or law, you know, uh, Honorable Kalonso Mushoka is a seasoned politician. And uh, he was one of those who were eyeing the position of the presidency to contest in exactly. the last election. Yes. And um, in my own thinking, although I think Kalonso Mushoka is looking at 2027. Uh, as a uh, mean, to, you want to make a stop in politics uh, of a presidential race, mm. and here is a situation or law whereby the, his relationship with Right Honorable Raila Odinga is providing him a very uh, a very strong support from not only the Luo Nyansa but from those people who supported Raila mm. Raila Odinga in the last election. So he's inheriting. A, I mean, he's trying to inherit a very strong and a very powerful. Uh, constituency. Mm -hmm. Constituency, I mean in this sense, the support that Right Honorable Raila Odinga had. In the last discussion that we had on law, we were looking people who they were perceived to be trying to topple Right Honorable Raila Odinga yes. from um, his political limelight. We talk of Abado, we talk of uh, Kidero, we mm -hmm. talk of all those. And we were, I mean, we were of the opinion that Raila's person or candidate will not necessarily come from that area, but whoever Raila will bless in the in the in future he will actually carry that support that huge support that uh, Raila has been uh, mean uh, has been having so in this case i think i mean uh, kalonso mushoga is strategically placing himself to inherit right on about raila odinga come the 2027 20, election if we will not be together because uh, we are not saying that raila is all so old that he cannot be there in 2027 he can still be there but he knows very sure that this is the only way mm. He can ever fight for the, the presidency of this country. Because if, if today, although uh, Kalonso say, yes, I'm joining His Excellency the President Ruto, his political future is already is, is done. Mm. Just uh, because come 2027, His Excellency the President Ruto will be vying for the second term in office. And at that age, Kalonso Mushoga will be how old is, will, will he be by that time? He cannot wait for Ruto to finish his term so that he can contest, but he has to fight with him. And that is why that chance that will allow, I mean, enable Immaculate to fight during the two 2027 I mean, election is, 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 is by sticking to right honorable Raila Odinga, mm. because he's already having a strong faith, I mean, a political pace. So in that case, I'm not foreseeing a, 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 in, the, in the future yes. having Alonso joining Ruta. Number two, although that's, that's what, what we need to know, Lord, is that as it is now, since we have, I mean, he has a lot of openness mm. to play the Kenyan politics by being in opposition. He will build himself by being in opposition. He cannot come out in the open the way he's coming open now yes. if he joins Ruta today. If he joins Ruta today, he will be done. And uh, in that case, uh, I'm not uh, actually for a single also because he has been do that and that way. I mean, he has been in and out. Mm. He has discussed, uh, as the president explained yesterday, that he has had an, a discussion with him. And uh, now I'm seeing that he has gone to the other side. And one thing that I'm, I'm almost supporting my brother here uh, about um, the talk that normally goes around mm -hmm. uh, referring right to about Raila as a, I mean, uh, Kusimia and all this and that. And then maybe Kenya Kwanza, Niku Kenya Kwisha. Mm -hmm. I think this kind of rhetoric language uh, should stop if mm -hmm. we have to build this country together. Mm -hmm. Because um, any dis disrespect of any particular leader, yeah. you are disrespecting the followers of that particular person. That we, we need to have in our mind. Mm. So we need to embrace that kind of uh, togetherness 
and that the language that can bring people together. So, he lugha ambao tulikuwa tukitumia wakati wa siasa lazima tuiache. Come to an end. Mm. All right. Um, there is that bit you said that uh, the yeah. deputy president talked about. Perhaps, director, mm. you have that clip mm. right now. If it's ready, press play. Residents of Kitui, the government is enhancing security to avert clashes between farmers and pastoralists from neighboring counties. Pia mwishimua rais, ningetaka kukujulisha ya kwamba, tumefanya mipango kabambe, mambo ya usalama, kwa zile shida zimekuwa hapa, inaangaliwa vizuri, na maofisa wako kwa ground, na kazi naendelea, na ni matumaini yetu ya kwamba, kile kisa kilitokea, hatutakuwa na marudio ya hiyo maneno. All right. That in reference to what you talked about, the issue of insecurity, which I'll come back to later on. Mm -hmm. But uh, what Dr. has talked about, that Honor Bukalonzo's Musioka's plan right now is 2027. We are hardly two months into the election, and 2027 is already taking shape, and every politician is now scheming for 2027. Do you really think this is a situation Honor Bukalonzo Musioka is planning? I don't think, but uh, that is the reality. That is the reality. He even said it himself. Yes. When, when we, were, we were campaigning, uh -huh. and he said that uh, one thing he will do is that uh, he will begin campaigns as early as possible. Mm. And yes, he is justified to, to do his campaigns and plan for 2027, because I'm sure it will not be easy to defeat uh, the sitting president. Mm -hmm. Perhaps I think uh, my, my party leader mm -hmm. will make history and, uh, and win the presidency in 2027 mm. so he has to plan yeah and i think it is good that uh, uh, he, he gets that uh, that time to plan adequately whether Raila supports him or not he needs to plan and win mm. because even uh, william, uh, our president now dr william ruto he was not supported by by the by the former president uh, uru kenyatta yes but because he planned early is the president now mm -hmm. so I, I fully support that and victor uh, allow me to say that uh, of course the clip has not been uh, played on when the deputy president was referring and talking about Ronda Bokalozo Musioka because i was there mm -hmm. perhaps i can tell you because he said that uh, he, he does not understand kalonzo musioka he, is, he has no direction sometimes he's saying this other time he's saying that and he said uh, they have tried to engage him but uh, they don't understand him Hey, it is not upon them to understand him. Mm. Perhaps that is a, a good political strategy. Yeah. Let not your enemies understand you. But uh, you see how that message was put to the Kamba people. And as you have said, Victor, that was uh, Honorable Kalonzo Musioka's home. And I was seated there. If I could be given a chance to respond, I would have not responded uh, lightly because uh, it is not good to disrespect uh, your, your, your leader uh, in your presence openly. And that's why I said with a lot of respect mm. and humility to the deputy president. Mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, he should respect our leaders. Yes. Whether they are, they are in government, yes, we know uh, Kenya Kwanza is in government. We know that and we respect that. But also let them know that uh, uh, he is the deputy president for all Kenyans. Mm. And all Kenyans must be respected, whether they are in government or not. And I think that is what we are disagreeing with him. Yeah. The, 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 the issue of uh, approaching Andrew Bocalonzo and offering him a job, you see, and, and as the Dr. said, uh, uh, my party leader is a seasoned politician. Mm. And he will not just make a decision without thinking about it. Yeah? Yeah. So I think what is needed here is for the government to respect the opposition. Because clearly, Victor, uh, by approaching opposition leaders, clearly the government the president and his deputy mm. wants to kill the opposition. That is, that, so that, one day they are saying uh, we want to have a, a vibrant opposition. Yes. The next day they are saying they approach them. What are they telling us? They are clearly saying that uh, they, they, are, they, are, they are not being uh, truthful. Yeah. Let them. Let the, the, the government support the opposition yes. because it will it will be a very sad victor. If we see now the, the government uh, uh, victimizing mm -hmm. yeah, uh, the opposition leaders, you saw what happened mm. in, in, uh, in 20, 20, 2018 mm. before handshake, Victor. Even security officers assigned to these opposition leaders were, 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 were taken okay, away. Okay, but let me ask you, yeah. what, what yes. is this so mm. interesting thing about Honorable Kalosu Musioka? This mm. happened even during last election when the mm. president was there. He campaigned, you know, we... we call on president on on on, uh, on, on Kalosu Musioka to come on board and that still continued until yesterday 
What is this something that people do not know, know, know about uh, Honorable Kalonzo Musioka? Honorable Kalonzo Musioka has been my boss, Victor. I was his personal assistant, and I can tell you, he's a very, very smart politician. Mm -hmm. And he never makes a decision without thinking about it. And uh, since uh, the president wants to capture, mm -hmm. for lack of a better word, the whole of uh, uh, Lower Eastern, and he knows very well, yes. for him, even if he appoints 20, all the, all the 22 cabinet secretaries from Ukambani. Yes. Believe you me, Ukambani has its, its, its owner. And the people of Ukambani will just keep quiet, they will listen to you, and, that, and he knows he has to approach uh, Ukambani using the right, the right person. But, and again, Victor, you know, Honorable Kalonzo Musioka <laughs> is not only uh, a Kamba leader. Yes. He's a national and in, 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 international leader. Right. He can go any part of this country, and people will say, these are good leaders. You know, Victor, good leaders in this country are very rare. Yeah. Yeah, they are very rare. And he's honest. If he tells you he'll do this, he will do it. And of course, uh, the president wants to look for honest people. And remember what uh, uh, Raila said when he was in Kibira, and of course people are saying yeah, he should have the Kamba. He said uh, Kamba people are very, <laughs> are very faithful. Yeah, and the president knows. It was in good faith. Yeah, yeah. The president knows if he gets the, full the loyalty staff, level is loyalty. on another level. Yes, exactly. He, he knows very well if he gets the the, the loyalty yes. of the Kamba people through, of course, their leader. <laughs> then it will be very comfortable, whatever he is. I'll, I'll because we are, we are always very loyal. Okay, allow me to be loyal to my director and take <laughs> <Yes>. a break. <laughs> Dr. Dr. when I come back, I still want us to go more uh, deeper into that discussion because he's saying that um, he knows very well that if opposition is weakened, more so the Wakambani region, then it's a done deal for Honorable Kalozo Musioka come 2027. Let's talk more about that when we come back after this press with Dr. Rotich and Kevin Katisia. Sure. Deputy President Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Good Morning Kenya on KBC Channel 1. Uh, um, talking matters politics, whatever happened yesterday, the president said that he offered Honorable Kanozo Musioka a job, but he said no. He is okay uh, wherever he is at the opposition. But politically speaking, and the way Wakili has said that if Kanozo Musioka was to join President Ruto's uh, uh, government, then that would definitely kill his power and veracity, politically speaking. Dr. Mm. what do you think? I think, uh, Lo, there are two things that we must look at during the, the, the yesterday's meeting of his session of the president during mm. the, the prayer day. Uh, I think what we need to look at, uh, Olo, his session as the president is on a charm mission mm. to bring on board all those who are perceived to be opposition to join the government. Kalonzo is a very key person in Ukambani politics. Yes. He's a seasoned politician. And actually and all, uh, all, all the legislators in Ukambani are in Waipa, if I got it right. Yes. Right? All the governors. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Cal oh, you, saw, you see, Kalonzo combines a lot of histories. He combines, he was in the government of his and the president Moy, the late Moy. He was there in the president of his and the Kibaki. And he was also present during the Kenyatta's regime. Mm. Mm. So he's a seasoned politician who cannot be ignored. And in this case, he commands a lot of support in Okambani. But one thing that uh, I don't want to escape my mind, but, uh, Speaker, is yes. that um, among the Kalenji nation, we have a lot of respect to, to the Kamba people. That is true. And uh, mm. that really emanated from our history. You know, the 1982 <coughs> coup, mm. where General Mahmoud and General Mulinge uh, brought back the government of the late President Moy. And uh, these were the most honest people. Mm. I mean, the Kamba people are people who can be relied on to deliver in anything that you do. So it is that honesty that is bringing Kambas. Uh, and that is why the Ruta is feeling that if the Kamba nation will be part of his government, yeah. and it will be more stable come 2027 politics uh, than ever. Do you think that's a risk that Todoro Kaluzo Musioka can make? Uh, when you look at it, uh, as far as Kalonzo is concerned, I'm just telling you the other side of the, 
the, the, the, the government side yes and what maturity of uh, people I mean people are thinking about the Kamba people and more so a, a representation of uh, Cali, I mean Kalonso's caliber so in this case if you they are, they are banking on Kalonso to deliver the whole of Kambani come 2027 and of course as we are saying it is no it's no longer a secret that the 2027 policy is actually shaping up mm. and uh, as much as the Kenya Kwanzaa is eyeing to have everybody on board May, but don't forget that it is not only for the purpose of development mm. it ma it also it for the purpose of solidly solidifying the campaign uh, ground for the 2027 and in this case even Kalonso is very very aware and uh, that is why he's not easily hooked he's not easily taken for a ride yeah. and um, he cannot ac he, I mean uh, for Kalonso's caliber he cannot just accept just a position just because he has been given mm. This is a person who is eyeing for a political seat at the highest level of this country. And um, he is looking at the opportunity in the camp of right Honorable Raila Odinga. Mm. Because uh, Honorable Raila Odinga is, was the number two man, a very strong, a very powerful competitor. And in this case, those who are eyeing to come up for president, <coughs> sorry, those who are eyeing for this president, president for positions come 2027, mm. Raila will be the key competitor. So in this case, if, if, if Kalonso today, in my own analysis, if Kalonso today will say yes to, to Kenya Kwanzaa and join the government, mm. his political future will finish the same day. He has to be in the, in the opposition to be able to remain vibrant, right. to be able to sell himself, to be able to articulate on issues to do with the, um, the governance of this country. Mm. And by doing so, he's, in, he's actually entrenching himself with the politics of Kenya. And that is the only way. There is no miracle there, although this is politics. <laughs> <laughs> and, and when you look at, you know, the structure of, of Ukabani, so to speak, um, Honorable Borelo Dinga is out of the country uh, for a 10-day trip, uh, and, uh, as well as one of the principal, that is Martha Karua, is out of the country. But Honorable Kalonzo Musioka is now holding fort for the two uh, principals who are now away. And if you can look at it, now the talk is Honorable Kalonzo Musioka. Let's take, you know, hypothesis that uh, Raelo Dinga takes a backseat and says, Kalonzo Musioka now take charge, Martha Karua also take charge. What will be the future of Kalonzo Musioka, Martha Karua and Raelo Dinga individually? Of course, you have said Raila, if he takes a backseat, so he will be at the backseat. Right. But now, if you know the, the people who will be left at the front seat is mm. uh, either Honorable Kalonzo or Honorable Martha Karua. And we all know, mm -hmm. even when... Uh, as me, I was looking for a running mate. Everybody knew that Honorable Kalonzo Musioka was the best running mate to Raila. Yes. Actually, <laughs> even before Raila was announced the, the presidential candidate for Azimio, Honorable Kalonzo Musioka was the best presidential candidate for Azimio. Believe you me, and I'm very convinced up to now, mm. if Azimio had announced Honorable Kalonzo Musioka as a presidential candidate, we will be talking of President Kalonzo Musioka today. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure even the Kenya Kwanza team knew that. They knew that. But of course, uh, Raila said uh, there was a remaining bullet which he wanted to use. <laughs> and uh, we trusted him. And he, uh, Kalonzo Musioka himself said that uh, he, if he will not be the running mate. And we saw what happened. Yeah. And you know, it's like he prophesied. But uh, as faithful as he is, you can see he stuck with uh, with, with Raila, and uh, they have they have been together. And I, I and one thing, Victor, uh, I will plead with the, our 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 our, uh, our senior leader, mm. Honorable Raila Odinga. It is I think it is high time for him now to also uh, give uh, Honorable Kalonzo Musoka a chance to to try his bullet. He has several bullets, <laughs> and he needs also to fire them. Like and I'm a, sure if he's allowed to find like that his <laughs> magazine is still yes, full. The magazine is full. <laughs> so if he's given a chance, I'm sure he'll be able to fire at the target. And the, and we all, and, and the president Ruto knows that mm. he is a target. Yes. And he will be he will be targeted very well. And one thing I can tell you, Victor. Yes. Uh, the leadership of this country now, as we speak, 2027 is about Honorable Kalonzo Musioka and President so William is, Ruto. Is, and the is, president knows that very well. Victor. He's Aaron. In yes, the Bible, we had yeah, Moses and yeah. Aaron. And I can who's tell going you, to deliver people finally. And, and I can tell you, Victor, <laughs> that may be the reality. Right. Because you know uh, what the president does. He, he now has a chance. Mm. Remember, even you and myself and Dr. here, Kenyans have a lot of expectations from the president. Mm. And the president, the team he will choose to assist him in his government. Uh, the, the deputy president, the cabinet, the PSCs, 
they will play a critical role yeah. not only in his uh, development agenda but mm. also in his political agenda mm. because uh, believe you me uh, honorable kalonzo musyoka and the Azmiya team will not uh, just keep quiet mm. they will do something because e kenya near this water and i'm sure they have the right also to 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 to, to demand their space mm. and another thing victor you see uh, one thing i will always uh, uh, have in mind is a lot of respect to my party leader imagine victor you being offered a senior job in government and you decline it means you love your people yeah. and you respect yourself this is somebody who respects himself mm -hmm. and if maybe uh, him as a person went to kenya kwanza believe you me uh, maybe we would not have been given the two or three uh, cabinet positions because i think we should we have, we have two now maybe we would have been given one or none mm. because they will, they will, they will say ah, already we have uh, colors then we are, we are good but now for them to keep uh, now trying to get our support mm. maybe we, we will get more or perhaps yeah? uh, yeah, maybe we'll, that, we'll that we'll can more. answer this one <laughs> <laughs> when, when you look at that direction, the kenya kwanza administration how many leaders do we have from uh, the css from kampan region if not Carlos musioka so to speak uh, i think uh, we of course we have matua yes and then we have another one uh, i don't remember the names Ma Ma malonza malonza right and so uh, someone would argue that that's a reward to the Kamba community and uh, when you had the deputy president Victor, talking about it, it about is not a reward because you even had yourself from the deputy <laughs> president saying <laughs> yes he even questioned his boss why he gave us two cabinet nominees and we did not deliver that much someone would argue so, that it was so politically it, so it was coined not, it, kind it, of was, a statement. it was not a reward it was a political move aimed at 2027 believe you me and i'm sure to uh, if um, our party leader stays uh, strong on a position we may even get more yes because they want to get more support from our company and that is what I, we want i, I think Olo, get more I, I think Olo, what, what's happening Olo? <laughs> I, I think uh, okay is excellent the president uh, william ruto's choosing to have uh, mutua mm -hmm. and uh, the, the the rest I think it was actually in good faith to bring a Kenyan face that he has, uh, he has actually promised Kenyans. Mm. That his cabinet will actually comprise of the, the whole Kenyans, wherever they are. Mm. Even in the Luonyansa, we have Owalo, we have now Mutua from Mukambani, we have... I mean, this is a national face that he says the president was actually, I mean, had promised. Mm. But whether, it, whether there are political uh, uh, minds behind the scene, uh, that will remain to be done. But uh, come 2027 law, uh, his Excellency the President Ruto will not be a walk over as some may be thinking mm. because uh, this is somebody who has been in also um, who has been in politics for a long time he is acquainted with the Kamba politics and uh, wh when he was uh, in Ukambani speaker you can attest that he, uh, Ruto himself he was at home mm. and uh, in that case we don't overrule whether, whether Kalonso will join uh, his Excellency the President in his government or not. That does not dissuade the fact that uh, Ruta will still be home, I mean home, yes. in Ukambani. Uh -huh. So that, whatever the imagination, I mean, the imagination that the people are thinking about the outcome, um, I can assure you, although I think uh, uh, Ukambani people will remain, uh, people will be looked for by many. And in this case, you are talking about the two leaders, Mother Karua and uh, Kalonso Mushoka. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm foreseeing uh, Kalonso Mushoka being at the upper hand in that hierarchy. Mm -hmm. Because if we have to go by the reward that these people give, because you overheard even Ricardo Kachakwa, the, 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 the deputy president, mm -hmm. saying that even though you gave us very little votes, we were able to give you this. That also gives you a fact that Asimio yes. had a strong, I mean, uh, the, the company still remained the stronghold of Asimio. Yes. And that is an area that will, uh, the, the, it now remains to be shaken. And that is why all these things are actually, the people are actually jostling to, to, to go to Kambani. But in this case, if they will not win Kalonso mm -hmm. as part of the uh, Kenya Kwanza government, I think they will also try to dismantle. The, the, the strength of the, 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 the Asimio in Ukambani. Mm. That, that will be the last resort that these people may actually undertake okay. because they are already there. You, you know what really happens? Let me get your mind on this, uh, Wakili. Yes. Um, when you look at how Ukambani is formed, we have got uh, all the leaders are almost 100% wiper. So some would argue that Kalonzo Musioka delivered, so what people would say delivered to the Azimio basket um, in terms of votes. But then when you look at the kind of, uh, uh, of, of strength that Honorable Kalonzo Musyoka is gaining right now, the number of press briefings and conferences, we've only seen him 
and a number of Azimio leaders. We've never seen Ray Lodinga addressing the president. Um, it's been a while. We've not seen Martha Karua again, but we've seen Honorable Kalonz Musioka mm. on the front line. Yes, that is it. On the front line, giving press conferences and ultimatums and, you know, pushing the government to do this and that. What he said, that Honorable Ray Lodinga will back, but they are going to form a very strong opposition, complete with the kitchen cabinet. When you hear this from Honorable Kalonz Musioka, uh, perhaps when he they walks like a duck, sleep like a duck, sings like a duck, then it's a duck. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that is a reality, Victor. <laughs> because you know, uh, when, when there's a, a beautiful girl and we are the three of us, mm -hmm. no, you have to jump and grab the opportunity and talk to her first. So the beautiful girl here is, uh, is, is Kenya. Mm. Yeah, and you know in Azimio, we know very well that uh, even Raila may say, I want to go for the, the very, very, very final bullet, which was remaining somewhere. Mother Karua may say, I think I have a chance. But you see, Honorable Kalonzo Musioka said that, uh, even from the beginning, he said that he will start his, his, his 2027 campaigns immediately. Mm. And that is what he has done. And I think uh, I fully agree with him that he needs to start uh, his, his campaigns immediately. Because nobody knows whether he will be supported by Azmi or not. Maybe yeah. Azmi will, will be dead by, 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 by that time. Mm -hmm. But him as a person, he has to be there. He has to be on his own. And I, I think all, all of us, we have but learned... Think Honorable Ray Lodiga can dump uh, Colonel Kalonzo Mosioka. You, you never know, Victor. You never know. If the former president dubbed I, I, the current I, I, president, <laughs> anything can happen. And let I, me say I this. Think Olo, yes. uh, what I'm saying, Abuana Speaker, mm -hmm. is uh, I'm not foreseeing a situation whereby Right Honorable Ray Lodiga can dump Kalonzo Mosioka. You saw Right Honorable Ray is actually looking for a very strong person a personality like of Kalonso's uh, ca caliber mm. you saw when he went to when he went to Homa Bay and then finally Kisumu the kind of welcoming that he was uh, he was accorded I mean it was of a presidential uh, welcoming and then number two during the outpouring of their hearts yes. when the the the, the, the Lua Nyansa people was were talking they were saying now that you have been with Papa for three consecutive elections we are looking forward that you will be the one reaching us to Kanan if you if you followed what happened, what transpired at the church yesterday, this yes. is the different church in Kisumu. Mm -hmm. I mean, they poured their hearts that we are looking forward to you, Honorable Kalonso Mushoka, mm. to take us to Canaan, the promised land that we have not yet been there. And in this case, uh, during his uh, his talk, he, he said that um, uh, received greeting from Right Honorable Raila Odinga. Mm. He will be joining us very soon. And then again, he went further and said, we are looking forward to right on about Raila Odinga to arrive so that we can chart out the way forward. We need to have a fully, uh, com I mean, uh, a, a fully formed cabinet ministers, just in a reflection of the, what's actually in the government. And in this case, actually, they are ready to take up their job of opposition. They are ready to keep the government in checks and balance. Mm. And that is what they are ready. So they are not looking out, out for jobs, as uh, some of us may be, uh, may be tempted to believe. When Kalonso talked, he is talking like somebody who is now ready to remain in opposition and give the, the government in checks and balance. Mm. And that is the way to go. And then you are no longer also seeing Mother Garua being in most of the, 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 these political forums. And mm. uh, it is more telling that the blessings of uh, Mze uh, is actually on Kalonso. Uh, if I'm not, uh, I'll be, I stand to be corrected. Yes. But that is my, my observation. You see Kalonso's utterances, he's at home in Nyansa, mm. he's at home with the Asimio, he's at home with the, 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 the I mean, these other guys from uh, Ukambani. And they are saying, and, and, and these people, they don't want to leave that opportunity. That's why the speaker is saying, we are in and we are actually satisfied with the position that we are as opposition, mm. and that we don't need any job. If there will be any, you can give us. But count on us that we shall make our independent decision come 2027. Our job, Victor, is to offer efficient uh, oversight mm -hmm. to the government. That is a very important job. It is. And one thing Victor can tell you uh, is that uh, President William Samuel Ruto and his deputy are our leaders. All of us as Kenyans. Mm. All of us, whether we supported them or not. He is actually the president to Raila. He is the president to Kalonzo. He is the president to you. He is our president. Mm. And one thing I may say, Victor, though in politics you are supposed to award your loyalist. It should not be open that uh, whether your loyalist is not efficient enough, you have to give them. It's good to, to, to reward them. Mm. But I think what the president should do, in my opinion, and I'm sure he's well advised, because you are a president of all. Yes. The way he is uh, asking Honorable Kalonzo to join him. Let us see, and I think we have seen, let us see him also 
reaching out to and getting, and I think that's what he has done, getting even cabinet secretaries from areas where they were no loyalists. Mm -hmm. I wish we could see somebody who was contesting for a seat in a, uh, an Azimia-affiliated yeah. uh, party, uh, party getting a, a, a government position, yes. not, not just their leaders. Because what they want to do, they want to uh, finish Azimio from the head, not from the bottom. And mm. one thing Victor can tell you is that uh, that proposal by my party leader to have a shadow cabinet, cabinet I fully support it. You never know, Victor, maybe I'll be there. What will, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be, the what will be comprised of and uh, what will be this cabinet, shadow, shadow cabinet look like? A shadow cabinet, uh, cabinet is uh, a cabinet where there's an, a, 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 an officer, let me call them a, a CS now, yes. opposition CS, <laughs> who is uh, in, in every government uh, cabinet position, yes. there's an opposition CS. Maybe I'll be, I'll be the opposition uh, CS for you. <laughs> yeah? I'll be there now as the I CS to, to deal with the, <laughs> the, the minister who is I there. Yeah? Because you see, we need to have a, a robust uh, opposition. Right. We need, as, as, <laughs> when now Honorable Kalonzo is at the level of dealing with the president, we need uh, the likes of myself dealing with uh, the CSs and keep them on check. Mm. Because if we have an efficient uh, opposition, believe you me, Victor, mm. work will be done in this country. The, what we saw, and of course we, we, are, we are all students of history, yes. uh, the, 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 the handshake, uh, in my opinion, mm. did some more harm Perhaps that is than, why than, than the benefit. That, 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 yes. That's one of the approaches. And we should learn from that. The president yes. tried to, yes. to, to wave yeah. to Honorable Kalozo. And let, let the president that. tell us if, we, if he wants a handshake. With, with the Azimio leaders led by Honorable Kalonzo Musiok. Let but him not beat around the bush. He should say, I, I, I've asked for a handshake with Honorable Kalonzo, and he has said no. Not uh, offering a job. Okay. Uh, already being a former vice president, that is already uh, a senior government position. Yeah. Victor, yeah. we all know that very well. Being a former president, a former vice president, you are taken care of by the state for the rest of your life. Mm. So, which other job does he want? He has been an um, uh, uh, MP, he has been uh, a senior minister, yeah. he has been a former vice president. What does you want to give him, if not to demean okay. him? Yes. Dr. as we mm. come to almost coming to a close, um, so this man, Carlos Mosioka, 2027, you are the one who said it at the beginning of this discussion mm. that all discussions are now heading towards Haruna Carlos Mosioka. And based on what you've seen across the media, he was in Kisumu for two days, in Nyanza region for two days. Uh, Honorable Ding, of course, is not there. What are we likely to see when Raila is back, finally is back, and of course he'll be briefed, this is what happened, and the way forward? I, I think, although what we should expect now, as, uh, as per what Kalonso said, mm. is that they are going to form a cabinet, which is a replication of the current government of His Excellency President uh, Ruto. And uh, this actually... <coughs> this, 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 these are the cabinets which I'll be giving the government, or their counterparts, mm. the, the, their fellow, because we, we have the Minister of Finance, the Minister of Energy, yes. we have minister, all these ministries. So the same ministers will, I mean, the, 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 the ASME will come up with the same team of ministers, mm. I mean ministers, eh? mm. which are, I may call it uh, shadow ministers, and they will be counter-checking whatever their fellow government ministers are doing yes and that that is the only way both they, 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 they will be putting up very qualified people if the, the those who are in the docket of finance they will get also a very qualified yeah. a very competent person yes. in, the, in, in the in the who is actually sound in the issues to do with finance exactly. those who are uh, sound in the issues to do with energy those with, i mean environment and also so we are expecting that shadow government to be formed uh, after the arrival of uh, right honorable Raila Odinga. so in this case uh what is going to happen is that now that these and, people and, and you, and I would suppose that the president is aware of this. He can also has openly said yesterday mm. that we are going to form, uh, I mean, uh, an, an, an opposition or a shadow cabinet. Yes. Which will be a reflection of what we have in the current government. Yes. What does that have to do? It is because they are now agreeing that they are in the opposition and they want to give the government in checks and balance. Mm. The only way they can do is to get professionals who are well acquainted with this, this uh, I mean, the, these respect, uh, respective uh, dockets so that they can give the government in checks and balance. Mm. And uh, that in itself alone shows that Kalonso is not ready, will not be ready very soon to join the, 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 the current government. Uh, per se. And in any case, he wants to be in the opposition yes. and to build himself for the 2027. I think it's good to say there, there is no chance. <laughs> yes. It's good to summarize there is no chance of uh, Honorable Kalonzo Musioka joining the government. There is no chance. Because we all know that uh, Andy he himself is determined to win this presidency in 2027. Mm. Mm. Yeah. 
And now, having now this forming of the shadow cabinet is part of the, the, the journey. We have to keep every government department in check. We need somebody there to keep every government de department in check. And of course, uh, uh, the president also has yeah. to, to, uh, to, to, as much as he, he, he is ruling now, he also has to, pr to prepare for 2027. Exactly. <laughs> which, which is ex exactly <laughs> what, what he's doing. Head in Kenyan <laughs> politics. Um, they said, we, we've not, people have not even healed about 2022 elections. And, yes. You know, the cabinet is still, still being formed and we're talking about 2027. Politics is just interesting. We cannot survive without politics. Politics is sweet. Ask me tell it's you. It's part yes. of our food. <laughs> it's part of our food. <laughs> uh, uh, finally, gentlemen, uh, before we come to a close, there's a story here that I want us to talk about briefly. Plan to unfold Kenya Kwanzaa parties into UDA draws mixed reactions. This is what happened to Jubilee and uh, this that aspect now and when you heard what happened in the Supreme Court uh, in Parliament now the declaration which is now the majority and now I hear there's another one at the Nairobi County Assembly which is now the majority is this the Azimio in in Nairobi County Assembly or the Kenya Kwanzaa what do you make of this in perhaps in one minute uh, legally speaking uh, to fold parties uh, into UDA as a party uh, that's a political uh, strategy yes. towards 2027 and maybe that could inform us that uh, it is maybe the current president mm. who uh, spearheaded that idea of, uh, for, of uh, folding all Jubilee Alliance parties that's exactly into what Jubilee happened to Jubilee. Party. I think that is what we are, we are seeing. Maybe in, 20, in 2017, maybe it is him who spearheaded that, which, which is a good political uh, strategy. And you know, uh, in uh, Kenya Kwanzaa, uh, there were some, actually right now, UDA would, even without talking about Kenya Kwanza, would be having so many uh, MPs, uh, senators, all those uh, positions. Yes. But of course, uh, because of the reverie, like look at what happened in, in the Kilifi governorship, for example. Yeah. If uh, Pa for Kingi and UDA were one, believe you me, uh, I don't know whether M Mungaro would have won mm. for the governor of, 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 of Kilifi. So it's a good strategy, but uh, of course, every every strategy, there are consequences. The consequences. So I'm, I'm sure they are hoping that whatever happened in 2017 when they formed Jubilee as a mm. party, mm. and they of course gained from it, and they, they, they were one team, and they, they, they were able to take so many seats. Maybe that's what they are, they are okay. aiming at. But right. of course, uh, there will be some resistance mm. from some of the parties who want to stand alone. And uh, it is upon them now to, to make sure that this uh, uh, merger mm. uh, of these parties is done in the correct way. But Victor, yes. I can tell you, politics, and all of these political parties are vehicles. If you see this vehicle will take me to Canaan, you'll, you'll board that vehicle. And if you, you see it will not take <laughs> you, you'll take another one. So yes. I think uh, uh, these game plans have already begun. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Your final yes. remarks, kindly, uh, on that. I, I, I think... Uh, the current government law has every good intention to solidify mm. its uh, political pace by building up a party that is very formidable. Mm. Uh, and I think the, the idea of uh, uniting together with those who are willing and they're able to support one another, as I mean, to join the UDA, I think I'm not seeing any, anything wrong there. What I'm only seeing is that mm. the, 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 the motive is to make a formidable party that come 2027. Mm. You see, you, when, when, when we have more parties coming together into a, a one party, we shall now be counting the representatives as, as UDA and not as ANC and not as all these other parties that uh, came up together to form the, mm. the, the Kenya Kwanzaa. So I think it is a good and a very positive uh, step ahead, but also it depends on the goodwill of the individual parties. All right. Gentlemen, thank you so much. They said that too much work and less play made... Um, <laughs> made uh, dilute. Exactly. Adult <laughs> boy. All right. That's thank where you. we wrap it up. Thank you so much for coming. We'll be talking to Dr. Joseph Rotich, who is an economist, but decided to say no. I'm playing <laughs> politics. So All right. And we have got Kevin Katisia, who is an advocate as well as speaker of County Assembly of Kitui. Let's just hope that something will be done in Kitui and the larger part of Eastern and even those as a of Chigali. Apart from hoping we'll do our best exactly. as leaders yes. to make sure that there is a peace, prevail. peace in Kitui. Absolutely. We'll you, have do our best. Work. you have a lot of work to do. Yes, yes, yes. All right. And thank you for your valid company. We are taking a break, but GMK is not yet done. Doreen Arange has some brilliant brains here to talk about family check. What is, it being, what is she going to be checking about? Doreen? Up next with Family Check. Bye-bye.